Welcome, everybody. Um, here we are for week two of our portrait assignment. And so this week uh, is basically the challenge is to take the sketch that you made last week where you were trying to get a likeness um, of a self-portrait or a portrait of somebody in pencil. Um, this week, you're going to take that likeness and try and turn it into a more finished uh, artwork that tells us more about you than just what you look like. Um, so the challenge is to have your photo go from just being a strict representation to going and actually being something that kind of uh, tells us a little bit about your personality or the personality of the person that you drew. Um, so what I've got for you today is a stack of uh, artworks that do this in all different ways. And so I wanted to share that with you guys and hopefully you'll find some inspiration to go and do something really cool uh, with your sketch this week. Um, you can use any media you want and I'm excited to see what you create. Um, so the first image I have here, this is Rembrandt, and uh, I love uh, the texture on this portrait. If, if you look close, um, basically it's almost like he sculpted his expression out of paint. It's a self-portrait that he did, and you can just sort of see the texture of the paint, and each brushstroke looks like it's actually wrapped around a three-dimensional surface. Um, he was incredibly skilled. Um, and seeing a Rembrandt painting in real life uh, just makes them even more incredible if you guys get a chance to go to the Getty or um, somewhere and see some of them. Uh, I put Gustave Courbet here. Um, this was his self-portrait. He titled it The Desperate Man. Uh, maybe he was a starving artist. I'm not really sure the, um, the story behind uh, this one. Um, but just thinking about how the expression or the emotion that the character has in your painting can add a lot to it. Um, just his sort of the way he's frantically sort of holding his hair and his eyes are open wide makes this uh, portrait very intriguing. We, it feels like it's telling part of a story and we want to know more as the viewer. Uh, here's Vincent Van Gogh. Um, his most famous self-portrait perhaps, it's the one that he made after um, cutting off his ear after one of his um, kind of psychotic episodes that he had. Uh, Vincent van Gogh is famous for basically being a self-taught self artist and just coming up with a style that's completely all his own. Um, in the background here, you can see there's an Asian print. There's a Japanese print on the wall. And uh, he collected these. He loved these um, artworks, and they informed his style. So a lot of sort of the graphic kind of flat shapes and nature that you can see in his designs, and even the brushstrokes were kind of mimicking the woodcut designs on these prints. Here's Pablo Picasso at two different times in his life. In the, on the right, it's during his blue period um, when he was feeling uh, a little dismal and sad and everything's in cool shades of blue. On the left, he's coming out of that period. The, co the colors are warming up and he's getting inter interested in abstraction and looking at African masks. And you can see how his, his features are getting more exaggerated. So it's um, two different points in his life and the portraits tell, tell us where he was when he made those paintings. Here's Lucien Freud, um, another artist with very interesting technique. Um, I love how the brush strokes in this painting are all visible, they're not disguised, and the way, since his colors are not fully mixed, we can see them almost marbleized as they sort of wrap around the forms of this character on the canvas. And if you look at the white sections in the background, you can get a sense of the thickness of the paint and uh, kind of how the paint is applied here. Here's Katie Kolwitz. Um, a woodcut print self-portrait that she did. Um, just that harsh, um, really vivid, sharp, uh, everything that you see that's white was basically just she took a knife and cut into a, a block of wood and then she rolled ink on the other parts to make this print. Um, Katie Colwitz suffered a lot uh, in her life losing children and her husband um, to World War I and World War II and um, she was a German artist, and uh, you can sort of see that um, that strength and the sadness at the same time in her in this portrait. Here's Chuck Close, uh, very so almost distorting the face in a sense from a distance. If you walk back across the room, this one looks almost like a photo. As you come up close, it gets more abstract, and he's basically gridding the face and looking at little tiny individual pieces of it and turning each of those pieces into an abstract painting that approximates the colors and values that he's seeing. Here's Anne Gale. Um, she's a contemporary artist. Here's another one of hers. 
And I love what she does. She sits with her sitters. She paints them from life and sits with the sitter for long periods of time. Sorry, leaf blower next door. I got to close the door. Um, and basically any color she sees uh, in the portrait, she carefully mixes that color, puts down a little dab of it, and then she'll go and find another little section. So she's basically uh, mixing colors she sees and trying to faithfully represent them and put them on the portrait in a very unique way. Um, also, just want you guys to think about how things that you put in the background uh, or symbols that you add to your portrait can also help tell a story. Um, here's Norman Rockwell's self-portrait, and I love how you look in the mirror, and that's what the artist is seeing, and then you look at the canvas, and you can see how he's showing, he's depicting himself. So he's giving himself a little more hair, making himself look a little bit younger. Um, so just, and of course, Norman Rockwell's painting the whole thing. So him is the artist showing how artists kind of color the world as they see it and, and give things their, their own take. Uh, here's Goya. Um, he's, this is portrait of himself wearing his candle hat. Um, there, there was a movie made about Goya, so you can see sort of what this hat looked like on the right-hand side there. Um, so it tells a lot about the artist. He liked to work at night. That's when he felt creative. And this was in the days before electric lights. Um, so he made a hat that had basically like a birthday cake. It had candles around the brim, and that would allow him to paint into the night. It tells us a lot about that artist. Uh, here's Frida Kahlo um, painting herself as a deer. Um, each arrow that hits this deer where she's being hunted um, is a place that she was uh, healing and dealing with pain from a horrible streetcar accident that she was in um, that almost killed her. And so she took up painting as a way of kind of healing from that accident initially. And so she did a lot of self-portraits um, that were very symbolic and, and interesting like this one. Here's Bob Arneson, another artist uh, putting their head on an animal. Um, we, can, we can tell a lot about Bob Arneson just by looking at these images. Uh, he's, he's cocky, he's confident, and he has a sense of humor, um, sort of comparing himself to a dog and um, drawing himself in kind of funny ways. He's a, he's a ceramics artist. Um, the drawing on the right is a, a colored pencil sketch for a sculpture that he made. Uh, this is Lyle Motley. Um, not a well-known artist, but an artist that, whose work I really enjoy. He's uh, from Colorado. And I just love these little stories that he tells by adding little symbols or abstract elements. Um, in the left, this girl is tearing out pages of what looks like maybe a diary or journal and folding them into little boats and sending them down a stream. Uh, the girl on the right, we can just sort of, she's riding her bike with her eyes closed and her feet off the pedals. Um, and the stop signs being obliterated by those colorful designs following her. So it's sort of like she, this feeling of freedom that she's experiencing. Uh, this is Cindy Sherman. Uh, she's a photographer. If you look her up, you'll see probably hundreds of photos of her um, done with all different types of different cameras and uh, in different styles. They look like, some of them look like from, they're from the 20s, 30s, 40s, 60s, 80s, from the future. Some look like they're from science fiction movies. But what's interesting about them is they are all self-portraits. Um, so she's kind of like an act, a makeup actress almost. She puts on makeup, she dresses up like characters and takes these pictures and basically imagines a whole bunch of possible selves for herself. Uh, here's Diego Rivera, Frida Kahlo's husband. Um, and uh, just, you know, he has his unique style. He doesn't try and um, uh, flatter himself. He paints himself as he sees himself. And uh, in the background, he just has uh, some of his um, famous paintings, which of course also represent just the the, um, the Mexico that he loved and just images uh, that he painted. So um, he's just sort of putting himself in his own world uh, in this painting. Here's David Hockney taking a photograph. He felt like one photograph of a person just catches one moment in time and one expression. And so with this woman, he sat with her and had a conversation for maybe half an hour. And as her emotion and expression changed, uh, without her being aware, he kept taking pictures and then he collaged them together to try and get a sense of her expressions and emotions. So anyway, uh, I am just throwing the ball in your court for you guys to do something cool, uh, to take your portrait, um, the likeness that you worked on last week, and this week to use any materials, any media you want um, to try and take that and 
turn it into something that tells us more than just what you look like. Something in the style or the technique, the background symbols um, that kind of uh, helps you express you or the person that you are depicting and tells us a little bit more about them. Have a great week, everybody. I look forward to seeing what you create.